Yep, shalom, brothers. Um, this is Brother Kapayim from uh, GMS Toronto. I like to say all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and uh, double honors to the elders, Great Millstone. Okay, and um, this lesson here is Mayans Biblical Secrets Revealed. Okay, and uh, through this lesson, we're going to prove that the Mayans are Israelites, and not only the Mayans, but um, uh, the, the other tribes as well, okay, of North, Central, and South America, and the islands are Israelites, okay, and this book here is Maya Secrets of Their Ancient World, okay, and um, I wanted to start off with, with a little thing here, okay, um, So, because a lot of people are talking about the Mayan calendar, but when you go into the Mayan calendar, it's really an end of an age, okay? So, an end of a cycle, okay? So this here, Maya ritual acts were um, distincted by the calendar. Certain days in the... Uh, Tuzakin 260 daytime cycle for example were marked during later periods with food taboos or requirements for sexual abstinence and people's birthdays were used to predict their destiny the uh, ha -ha -ha time cycle was a 365 day year consisting of 18 months each with 20 named days the five extra days in the cycle were the way Eep, an unlucky period that was used to prepare for new year ceremonies each 360 day cycle of the month was a ton 20 tones equaled a katon um, 19.7 solar years and 20 katon equaled a bakton 394 Point three solar years by adding these cycles together into a long count date the Maya mark time from when they thought the current world was created on August 13th 300 uh, 3114 BCE in our Gregorian calendar, the ending of any one cycle was the beginning of another cycle. Alright, so that's what basically 2012 is. The ending of any one cycle and the beginning of another cycle were cause for celebration to ensure prosperity in the coming years. New stone mon monuments and buildings were often dedicated at the end of the uh, Katans and each Katan had its own patron deity and associated rites okay and uh, this is this is an illustration right here okay so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bring out some uh, some historical facts before, before we get into the actual lesson, because the lesson was shot at uh, Victoria University, all right, in Toronto, just um, just uh, like a uh, street away from, um, from, from the Royal Ontario Museum, okay, because we couldn't uh, film inside, all right? They didn't want us to film the Mayan exhibit inside, okay? Okay, so this website here, okay, goes into how the Mayans had a story of Moses, okay? The Mayan Moses, 
and the Red Sea crossing. Okay? Has the reader ever wondered why or how the remote and famous Mesoamerican tribe that reached a high pinnacle of cultural success in the ancient American uh, New World, the Maya held within their own tribal historical records such as the Popol Va, the annals of the Chaka Quails, and the Titor de Los Sonoros de Tutan uh, I Capan, a clever and uh, consist record of the biblical Red Sea crossing, an historic and very uh, miraculous earth changing event of deep antiquity that occurred in the other side of the Atlantic ocean where their ancestors or where their ancient homeland had been okay these were the three nations of uh, Quinich and they came from where the sea I mean I mean where, where the Sun rises okay um yeah so this is from this book here okay on page uh, 170 okay and the sun rises over the Atlantic from the east to the west as viewed from Guatemala okay so they came from the east okay on ships that's 2nd Ezra's um, 13 okay and then I'm gonna go into this here um, Yeah, what is of a particular interest next is that when they came to the sea in question, their leader, uh, Balem uh, Quitzi, also known as uh, Kulakan, enacted what can only be called a supernatural event. When they arrived at the edge of the sea, Balam uh, uh, Quitsi touched it with his staff and immediately a path opened okay this Balam Quitsi is recognized among Mayan scholars to be the same as uh, Kulakan right and this is from the book uh, Annals of the uh, Chaka Coils, page 55, footnote 51. All right, so this is the footnote here. Their leader at the time, Balang uh, Quidzi, being a title given to several historical figures, such as Joseph with his coat of many colors, um, Pizom Ka Kata Al who is also called Balim Quidzi, Quidzi, literally means fortified lord in Shemitic languages such as Hebrew and Phoenician. Okay, so now we're going to go down a bit more. Okay, um, then we have this amazing statement these then were the three nations of the uh, Quijis and they came from where the sun rises okay so they didn't come from the barren strait okay descendants of Israel of the same language and the same customs when they arrived at the edge of the sea Balem Quitzi touched it with his staff and at once a path opened which then closed up again 
for thus the great God wished it to be done because they were the sons of Abraham and Jacob okay and this is from uh, Titolo de los uh, um, Sinars de Tut a Cap Capian page 170 okay so yeah so they're, so they're the sons of Abraham Isaac and Jacob okay and um, this title of this art um, article all right is Ten Commandments at Las Lunas New Mexico so we prove that the Mayans had um, had a story of Moses now, now we're gonna prove that they had the Ten Commandments okay so um, th this is it here and you can see a close-up of it right here okay it's written in the Paleo Hebrew okay the Lashwan Kodash, okay, and um, I'm gonna put on this on this part here facts about the stone surrounding the flat face of a large boulder, weight at um, 80 to 100 tons, is a large mass of black lava formation around the stone. The Ten Commandments inscription is entitled about. 40 degrees clockwise from horizontal. The language is Paleo Hebrew, the Lashwan Kodash, an old ancient Hebrew alphabet. The words translated are indeed the complete full words of the Ten Commandments written in Exodus 20 and 1. In the middle of the stone, a five inch long in width by two inches height and one inch deep sick of the stone was broken off proven that this inscription was not made by human hands but by the fire of the God of heaven I mean the God in heaven and this is the website here okay Las Lunas okay so I, I showed you that um, that they had um, that they had it in, um, in 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 Las Lunas and and they have a story of Moses, okay? Because they are biblical Israelite. Now we're gonna get into the lesson, all right? That we did uh, on on the street, and um, yeah. All right, Shalom. You know, we're the Toronto prophets. You know, out here in Toronto, Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look around, we're in downtown museum. You know, we took a trip to the Royal Ontario Museum for the, um, you know, the Mayans secrets uh, of their ancient world. You know, which we're gonna get into. Mm -hmm. And um, but first off, you know, and always giving all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, for this understanding, this truth, and for laying its spirit on us. You know. And um, double honor to the elders of Great Millstone for giving us this teaching. All right, um, you know, his brother Maya Cloud, yeah, from the Toronto camp. And, um, yeah, brother Kapai, I'm holding the camera right now. Yeah, so, you know, I'm gonna pass it out to him. He's gonna be your speaker for today. Okay. All right. All right. So yeah. So shalom. Yeah. So we're gonna get into the Mayan thing. And uh, just to tell some of you brothers, you know, uh, brothers should go out to the museum more often. You know what I mean? Because this is some things that 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 uh, that you know, some secrets in there that 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 reveal who we are. You know, but the whole thing is that this exhibit, this uh, this Mayan exhibit, we couldn't we couldn't hold. Um, I mean, we couldn't bring the camera inside. You know, yeah. because they're saying that this was loaned to them from the Mexican and uh, Guatemalan government. You know. And um, yeah, man, they're making money off of our people, man. That's what it all boils down to, you know? Because it tells you in there that they had a writing system, but then it doesn't show you. They try to say that, oh, it's only hieroglyphs, but then on, 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 only three, on, only three of their, uh, I think they call them codex books, only survived. You see what I'm saying? And then that's how they got, oh, that this is a uh, hieroglyphs or whatever. So what about all the other books? Because it tells you that they had a vast history 
of uh, writing. And then they're selling ponchos over there for a hundred dollars, man. You know what I mean? So that's just like Comfy's camp, man. You know, but this is Esau making money off our people. Comfy's just a wicked nigga making money off of the Israelites, you know? So yeah, so the mines are Israelites, okay? And the ones that were uh, in the higher um, priesthood of dealing with the stars and, um, and, and the calendar, those were from the tribe of Issachar. And, and, and the other part of the kingdom were, uh, were, were Zebulon, okay? Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and going down, you know? And, um, you know, that, that's the whole thing. So, if anything, we're going to start off with, uh, with uh, Genesis 49. We'll go, we'll go there. Yeah, 49 and 13. Yeah, we'll start, we'll start off with Issachar and read about Zebulon as well. Yep. We'll start at uh, Genesis 49 and 1. It says, And Jacob called unto his sons and gathered... It says, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I might, that I may tell you that which befall you in the last days. Yeah, so they we're in the last days right now. That's the whole big hype of the of the Mayan calendar. We're in the last days, okay? Where where a new beginning is gonna happen. All right, Jacob is gonna come up. All right. Uh, verse thirteen. It says, Zebulon shall dwell at the haven of the sea. Yeah. He shall be for a haven of ships. Yeah, so that's talking about the Panama Canal, okay? Because Zebulon is Guatemala to Panama. That's who you are, okay? If you're in between those two countries, you're a Zebulonite according to the Bible, okay? You're not a Latino, Hispanic, or any other thing. You're a Zebulonite, okay? It says, Zebulon shall dwell at the haven of the sea and shall be for a haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. Because if you look up the word haven, the word haven means like a shelter or a port, mm -hmm. right? And it says a haven of ships, so a port of ships. And then the brother mentioned uh, the Panama Canal Zone, which was what? The import, the exporting of trading. It's like a docking point to make um, import and exports to get through the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean, right? Yeah. You know? So that's, that's you uh, Panama Indians, man. Right? Yeah. All right? Uh, verse 14, it says, Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two borders and he saw that rest was good yeah. and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulders to bear and became a servant unto tribute okay yeah so that that's talking about the hard work of of, uh, of the mexicans all right yeah. but right now you're working hard for the white man okay and, and uh you're not you're not working hard for the lord man you're you're bound down to uh santa morte you're worshiping death man and a lot of those uh, Mayan artifacts are artifacts talking about death, worship of the underworld, yeah, yeah. a lot of idolatry, man. Yeah. My head was hurting going that's through true. there, you know? My head was hurting because I'm like, Jake Jake was really going off. And that's why the conquistadors came down there and destroyed your people, okay? Yep. Um, yeah, can you get um, De Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy 33 and 18? All right, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33 and 18. Yeah, read down to 19. Okay. And of Zebulon, he said, Rejoice, Zebulon, in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. Yep. They Issachar, Issachar in your tents, all right? So in Zebulon, Issachar is going to be in their tents, all right? Which, which, uh, which I explained to you that the higher priest of the Mayans were Issachar. So they're in the tents of Zebulon, all right? That's why the, uh, the empire expanded down into uh, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, okay? Yep. So they're going back and forth. You're, you guys are brothers. You're indigenous to this continent, all right? So it was nothing for, let's say, a Native American to go down to Colombia. It was nothing for that because you guys were brothers, okay? Yep. But this is talking about the Mexicans and uh, and the people of Guatemala and and uh, um, Guatemala to um, Panama. It says they shall call the people unto the mountain. Yeah. There they shall offer sacrifice of righteousness. Yeah, so sacrifice of righteousness, man. Because during the Mayan times, what were you guys doing on top on top of mountains and on top of pyramids that you built? Those you were doing. Um, Sacrifices unto the damn devil, man. 
that's what it was really about you know the spiritual demon satan okay and um yeah man that that was not righteous what what you're doing cutting out the hearts of your brothers you know you aztecs in your minds okay that wasn't righteous okay it says for they shall suck of the abundance of the sea yeah. and of the treasures hid in the sand yeah well what, what type of treasures are hidden in the sand the gold the diamonds the resources of the land and who took them from you the spaniards yeah. took them from you okay that's why they're in the land right? yeah well and, well, then, and if you watched um because watching the movie uh panama deception mm -hmm. you know you you pat you zebulon you should you should watch that document man yeah on um on what the so-called white man did to get that that uh territory man yeah. you know the you the so-called u.s troops you know under the the order of george bush uh what's that guy's name roosevelt Oh, uh, Theodore um, Roosevelt? Yeah, under him. You know, no. they, they fucked your land up, bro. You know, you gotta, um, but, um, I got a scripture. Okay. This is, uh... This is, um... And yeah, man. Um, two. Yeah, like I like I said earlier, there's heavy adultery, man. You know, Ephraim is really joined to idol. And when I say Ephraim, it's not only talking about the Puerto Ricans alone. It's talking about the Latino tribes. But the Puerto Ricans are, are the head of, of the Latino and the Native American tribes. Yeah, man. You know, and and a lot of crimes that you are committing against each other. Just watch. Just watch Apocalypto, man. Okay. And a lot of your customs. You, 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 uh, you, uh, Mayans and Aztecs, you took from, you took from, um, you took from ancient Egyptian and, uh, certain Hamedic, Hamedic tribes, you know? That's because, uh, because, you know, e uh, Israel, for some reason, just loved Egypt, man, you know? Even after they left out of Egypt, they, they loved it for some reason, you know? And, um... Yeah, because, you know, the Most High wanted them to go off into idolatry, you know, to chastise them as, as sons of the Most High, okay? You guys have uh, music, you know, a lot of you Indios, all right? You have music talking about um, Hijo, Hijo del Sun, uh, I mean, uh, Hijo del Sol, or uh, Hijo del, uh, del Luna, you know? That means, that means son, son of the Moon, son of the, uh, son of the Sun, you know? You guys ain't no son of the Sun, you're, you're Hijo del Dios, you know, uh, Hijo del uh, Israel, you know, that's that's who you are. You're sons of Israel. You're sons of God, you know. That's why they called you Indios, you know, because in God, you know, God is within these people. That's what they said, you know. Uh, this is First Chronicles, uh, the 12th chapter in the 32nd verse. It says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time to know what Israel ought to do, yeah. the head of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandment. Yeah, so, you know, Is Issachar knew, knew what to do before any time, before any war, you know, they knew when the, the new moons were coming in, our yeah, feast but, days, yeah, but, you um, know? I remember, uh, I believe the elders were talking about how the, the so-called Mexicans, like the Ishkorites, before they would go to war, they could tell by the looking at the, uh, the stars to see whether they were going to lose or win the wars. Right? Yeah. You know, the battles that they will go, you know? And then also showing you that the Aztecs, which are the so-called Mexicans, mm -hmm. you know, they were given that spirit by, you know, the Heavenly Father to, to know the understanding of times, right? Yeah, because, too, the, the Aztecs had, had great understanding of times. It's just that the Mayans uh, had the, um, yeah, the Mayans had, um, the Mayans ha had the calendar ending, you know what I mean? But the Aztecs, when you go through it, they had great mathematic uh, skills, um, you know, um, uh, knowing of the times, you know? So it, it was, it, it's just that my, the Maya, the Mayans have been 
uh, popularized, mm -hmm. you know, for Esau's agenda, you know, which is the Heavenly Father's agenda of his world going down. Yeah. Okay, and um, I, I wanted to get this from um, from this book, Maya, um, ancient, uh, the secrets of of the ancient world. Yep. Okay, and here, look, you can see, this is Israelites, man. Okay, in Maya, these these are not Asian people. A, lot, a, a Peru man told me that he thought he was Asian, man. Okay, if you believe that you're Asian, you're, you're, you're an idiot because there's no research backing that up that you guys came from the Bering Strait. Most, most historians that dealt with uh, Israelites in the New World, they said that they were Israelites, you know? And then, um, two, when, 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 when you Negroes start saying that you're African, and you uh, Latinos start saying that your ancestors were Asians. That, that's given. That's given um, all your glory and and uh, and all your um, all your honor on, on, onto another nation. You know what I mean? Because it's saying that oh, you you weren't really that smart. It was the Asian. It was the Asian blood that I had in me that that made me do all these things, build pyramids and stuff like that. That's a hell no. Okay. So this is from a book here. All right. Um. Okay, uh, protected place. Okay, so this is on page 14, and this is the last paragraph on page 14. Okay, protected in places by an uh, almost um, in, impetrable wilderness, the last of the Maya were not brought into the Spanish Empire until uh, 1697 CE. The conquest shattered many long standing Maya traditions. Right, which were um, some of them went back to Israelite uh, traditions because you're keeping up some of the customs. But the thing is that you start going so far off into your own doctrines that the Most High had to bring the conquistadors to take you down. Okay. Uh, classic Maya culture having been reshaped, reshaped. Okay. So it, 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 what, what, what we went to go see today is not all of what Maya um, uh, existed like, okay? Because they took out the Hebrew attributes of their culture. You see what I'm saying? Um, you know, they, they didn't want to show the writing. But then when you go into the Las Luna Stone, who, who's down there dwelling in the Las Lunas? You natives and, and you uh, Latinos, okay? Um classic Maya culture having been reshaped by elements introduced during the post classic period was now more radically altered by the addition of Christian and Spanish ideas which which those ideas were um, pagan ideas okay because the so-called white man is the damn devil he brought you Caesar Bolger okay and made you bow down to Caesar Bolger okay and, and when you look into Caesar Bolger, that's 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 the Hazu crystal that you have in your house, and making you think Hazu crystal was a uh, was a uh, um, was a uh, was, uh, was a white man when he wasn't. Okay. Because yeah, why? Who is he? He was uh, Caesar Bolger. Yeah, know? Caesar Bolger. Sixth son, uh, the second son of Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome. Yeah. Who was also known as Rodrigo Bolger. Yeah, and then after yeah. I have a book on it too, I'll I'll, I'll get some from that book right now. Okay. Uh, cattle. Pigs and chickens were introduced. New saints and um, uh, sacraments transformed religious life, and the Roman alphabet replaced uh, um, uh, glyphs, which is which which were the hieroglyphs. But really, it should say there the Hebrew, okay? Because the hieroglyphs that was something for for the priest and uh and, and those temples you see what i'm saying but they had written languages yeah, tablets like, i believe the temple was called on um, the palinic palinic k something like that p a l e n q u e yeah you know yeah despite yeah. all these changes uh critical aspects of the mayan culture have endured and echoes of the classic maya can still be seen in today's Maya communities, all right? Because a lot of damn crackers in there, I heard them, they were saying that the Mayans were existed, uh, uh, didn't exist, Yeah. okay? They're like, wow, Mayas today? Because there's a section that shows you about Mayas today. Yeah. And these crackers thought that you died out, man. You Israelites died out. So you, you gotta start taking pride of who you are, man. 
Stop calling yourself a Latino, man. Stop calling yourself a, a damn a, a Azteca, a barrio Azteca. You know what I mean? You're not no ghetto Aztec. You're an Israelite, man, from different, different tribes, okay? Yeah, so so they endured, all right? Because we, we're, we, we are the stars of heaven, okay? And most most uh, Mexicans are, are, are Israelites, okay? Not Spaniards, okay? Uh, Maya can still be seen in today's Maya commu communities. The languages that they speak, the ritual calendar that they follow, and the striking profiles of their faces represent just a few of the connections between the present-day Maya and their ancestors. All right? So, you know, basically, you, you, you so-called white people, you, you also wrote in history that the Tainos were extinct. Now, now a lot of Puerto Ricans are finding out, hey man, I'm a Taino. But really, really, you have to go deeper than that and find out that you're an Israelite, man. That's that's what the Most High wants you to find out, man. They didn't extinct you, man. They didn't extinct all the uh, Indians of the Caribbean and, and South America and, and America and Canada. A lot of people think the, 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 the natives are on the reserves, man. They're not extinct. Well, I got a scripture, though. Yeah, bring this on is, the scripture. This is Hosea chapter 1. I'm going to start at 6. It says, And she conceived again, and bare a daughter. And the most I said unto him, Call her lo ra -ama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. And it says, But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, mm -hmm. and will save them by the Lord their power, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Yeah, so for because of the heavy adultery that the uh, Latinos and Native Americans, who are the Israelites, were, who were part of the kingdom of Israel because it split. Because when, when it said the kingdom of Judah, it's talking about the, um, the Negroes. Judah, yeah. yeah, the house of Judah, right? So the house of Israel were you Latinos and Native Americans and your heavy in uh, adultery worship and... Um, and, and the most high the most high got rid of you during the uh, Assyrian captivity but now you are brought back into the fold through Yahweh Shai man because that was the sheep that he was talking about you know what I mean that's the last sheep okay he says now when she was had weaned lo ra lo ru lo ra ama she conceived and bare a son then called then said the, the most high call his name lo ami for ye are not my people, and I will not be your power. Mm -hmm. So you know yeah. that's talking about the Latin tribes, man. The Lord, the Lord casted you off, man. You know, for all your idolatry that the brother was getting into. Yeah. You know, and then he 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 named you Lo Ami, which means not my people. You know, but it says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered. So the brother was getting to the whole extinction. That's all bullshit, man. Right? You know, you Latin tribes, the so-called Aztecs, the so-called Mayans, the so-called Incas, that's you Latin tribes today, man. Right? You know, you so-called Mexicans, you so-called uh, Guatemalans, the Panama, and the Incas, you so-called Colombians, the Brazilians, you know, the tribe of Asher, man. Right? The Native Americans, eh? I mean, yeah, the Lord put hell on you, you tribe, because why? It's part of the curses. You know, you think uh, the so-called Negroes, West Indians, and Haitians, we're only supposed to get it? No, you Latin tribe are under that curses too, man. Yeah, slavery. You know, but okay. the Lord, but the Lord's, but the Lord still kept His promise, which He gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that you should be on the sand of the sea. So you can't, you can't number Israel, man. And there's no such thing as the extinction of Israel because what did uh, Jeremiah say that? If, the, if you could if you could measure the earth and, and uh, stop the sun from going to its uh, course, its yeah. daily course, then you could stop the nation of Israel from becoming a nation before the Most High. But that's yeah. impossible, man. All right. So it says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. It shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. And where, where is that? That's in America, man. You know, because you're not being taught your, your true identity. 
here in America. Yeah, and then there was a lot of Latinos in there. They they, they still left without knowing a clue of who they are. Exactly. You know? You know, and, they, and then they're looking at all those uh, idolatry worship that the damn bugged out Inkling, uh, you know, Mayans and Aztecs were doing, and they think that that's part of their uh, origin, man. Yeah, yeah, because re re remember the guy who came up to camp? Uh, he was from Mexico and, and, and he had the skulls yeah, uh, yeah, on his yeah, hand yeah. and he's like this is part of my culture yeah, yeah, on and then bracelet. the yeah yeah on his bracelet so the brothers are like you you, you represent a culture of death man yeah. this, this culture that, that we're telling you to come back to uh, predates the Mayas man this is who you are before you became Maya okay and th and then too the the, the uh, Mayan word right the Hebrew word is uh, waters is uh, Mayam, Mayam, it means waters, you know? And then uh, Zebulon, his prophecy was to be by waters, be a haven of ships, you know? So you, you gotta start doing your research, man, okay? And the Bible is not a white man's book, okay? Uh, yeah. Let me get something, cause, uh, cause we talked about Caesar Boger. This here is a prince. This is a historical book on, um, on Caesar Boger, okay? And, um, Pope Alexander the Great, okay, which Caesar Boger is what you know as that white Im image of Jesus that a lot of you Latinos, Native Americans, and Negroes have in your house, okay? Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get uh, something right here real quick. I, I have something, but I want to prove to you that when that when in this book it talks about um, Caesar Boger, it talks about. Uh, it, it, sometimes I mention him as Duke Valentino, okay? But here, it, here is one thing before I get that point. This is on page uh, 133, right? Uh, in the first paragraph, I say that every prince ought to desire to be considered um, uh, selment and not cruel. Nevertheless, he ought to take care not to misuse his um yo what, what is this word here uh clemency yeah clemency yep. yeah right caesar boger was considered cruel notwithstanding his cruelty reconciled the um the the rock the rock manen, right okay uh unified it and restored it to peace and loyalty right so this guy he was he, he was a he was a devil and he was restoring uh, Edomite kingdoms to come together, all right? And to kick out Israel, the, um, the Moors at that time, the Moors, the Jews and the Christians, which were all Israelites, okay? Which were dark-skinned dark -skinned people, you know? But they started taking on Christianity and started kicking, out, kicking us out of Spain and Portugal, okay? So, um, let, me, let me get something else here real quick from this book. And then I have the word of uh, clemency oh, here. Yeah. So, you know, brothers don't think we're just reading without getting understanding. Yeah. Uh, the word clemency says the quality of being clement, mm -hmm. disposition to show forbearance, compassion, or forgiveness in judging or punishing. Yeah, so he was a cruel man, but he unified the Edomites to kick us out, which was cruel too because we, we were ruling. Yeah. All right, and he's a damn devil. Okay? Yeah. So this here. Is um, is page 26 from the Prince? Okay, this was written by Machiavelli. Uh, when Valentino, as Caesar Boger, the son of Pope Alexander, was usually called, right? So that so that's what he was usually called. So now I'm gonna get this here, which is uh real quick to show that this guy he, he had armies killing, killing and um and, and um and uh. And corrupting up the place, man. Okay, um, hold on. Okay. There's one other passage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but the Duke's soldiers. Okay. So this is from page. Uh, 228 
but the Duke's soldiers, not being content with having uh, um, pillaged, pillaged the men of uh, uh, Olive, uh, Oliver Tato, right, began to sack uh, Senegal La, right, and if the Duke had not uh, repressed his outrage by killing some of them, they would have completely sacked it, all right? So even his men were wicked, not having come to uh, come and tumult being silenced, the Duke prepared to kill uh, Vinazito and um, o o Olovato, right? Right? And um, uh, he led them into a room and caused them to be strangled. Neither of them used words to keep it with their past life. Malazino uh, uh, prayed that he might ask the Pope full pardon for his sins. Oliver Otto uh, cringed and laid the blame for all his injuries against the Duke of uh, Villalizzo, oh, oh, right? Um, Pangolo and the Duke di uh, Gravani Orsini were kept alive until the Duke heard from Rome that the Pope had taken the Cardinal Orsino, uh, the Archbishop of Florence, and uh, um, uh, Messier uh, Acapo da Santa uh, Crocine after which news on January 18, 1502, in the castle of uh, Paive, they also were strangled in the same way. So this guy, he's a murderer, he's a killer, okay? He um, slept with his own sister. You can do his own, do the research with uh, Lucretia Beaugere, try to kill his father, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, man, all types of charges on this man, man. And these are the same charges that are on the so-called white man, the conquistadors that took down the Mayans, man. Okay. And, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's basically pretty much it on that. That's right. right? And, then, and then that info that you just gave out, brother, it's not, it's not, it's not hidden too, you know, like, you know, they expose it in the show called the Borgias. Yeah. Um, the crime family. And then, um, this game, the uh, the assassins. Yeah, Assassin Creed. Yeah, the Assassin Creed. They show you that in that game too, man. Yeah. You know, so this, this this devil, man, this devil knows the history, but he's hiding it from you, from you niggas and you spicks, man. Yeah. You know, you gotta dig for this truth, and ultimately you learn how to open your eyes to it. You know. Okay. Yeah. Can Can you get us uh, Second Ezra, um, uh, six? Six and eight. Six and eight? Yeah. This is uh, Second Ezra, chapter six, said at seven. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follow it? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born. Yeah. Of him, Jacob's hand held first the, the heel of Esau. Oh. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning you're, of it you're, that you're follow it. I mean, you know? university. So you know that's that's talking about um that that was a prophecy, okay. or or um basically going into the downfall of the so-called white man, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, you find that story in Genesis the twenty-fifth chapter on uh, Jacob taking hold of Esau's heel, which is all symbolic. You know, foreshadowing um, the, the nation of Israel bringing down your kingdom, man. Starting off with Yahweh Shai. You know? It says, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed him. Now, it's not talking about the whole world, man. You have people believing that the world is going to end. If you go to um, Ecclesiastes, the first chapter tells you that the earth can endure forever, man. You know? There's no ending in the earth, man. It's just that world is talking about a, a rulership. All right, because who's ruling right now? Mm. You know, the brother got into uh, Cesar Borgia, right? Yeah. Who, who's uh, posed as uh, white Christ. Yeah. Oh. That's all over the world, man. Yeah. I showed you 
by, um, that alone showed you that who's ruling right now, man. Yeah, Job, Job 9 and 24. Yep, Job yeah. 9 24 said the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. You know? He covered the face of the judges thereof, man. Alright? It says, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So, you know, that's that's the new, that's the new, um, what do you want to call it? That's going to be the, the new rulership, so to speak. After this so-called white man goes down, man. Mm -hmm. You know? And, um, mm -hmm. matter of fact, I got, uh, This is, um, this is uh, Isaiah chapter 40 and 8. It says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of the Most High shall stand forever. All right, and then, you know, all these, all these prophecies, they're, con they're all consistent in the scripture, right? They're all, uh, they all coincide with the words of the Most High, man. Right? They are the words of the Most High. Man. All right, so the Most High made it a, um, promise unto our people that we're going to rule in, in the coming era, man, then so be it, all right? You have these people thinking that America is going to, you know, go back to its, uh, to its, um, you know, what do you want to call it? Uh, uh, the golden age. Yeah, the uh, golden age. You know, you know the, the, the south, the south is going to rise again and shit. Yeah, the economy is going to boost back to its um, proper state, so to speak. But no, man, that's, that's, that's not going to happen, man. Alright? The so-called white man's kingdom is crumbling. Yeah. You know? And um, yeah, that's it on that. But um you have something? Uh yeah, 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 yeah. From this book again? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so from this book again, um, this is um uh the Prince Machiavelli, right? Um page 42. Um yeah, 42. The, the last paragraph going on to page 43, but it is necessary to know well how to disguise this characteristic and to be a great uh, pretender and uh, this, this embleber uh, and men are so simple and so subject to present uh, necessities that he who seeks to deceive will always find someone who will allow himself to be deceived. One recent example I cannot pass over in silence, Alexander VI, which is the father of Caesar Bolger, which is that white Jesus, right? Did nothing else but deceive men, nor ever thought of doing otherwise, and he always found victims, for there never was a man who had greater power in a certain, or who with greater oaths would affirm a thing yet would observe it less nevertheless his uh deceits always uh, succeeded according to his wishes because he well understood his side of mankind which is the damn devil being a damn devil okay and um i had another one in page 93 um page 93 this is the second paragraph uh, Alexander the sixth arose afterwards who of all the uh, uh, pontiffs that have ever been shown how a pope with both money and arms was able to prevail and through the uh, instrumentality of the Duke Valentino and by reason so he used his son as an instrument man an assassin you know that's why you got a thing called Vatican assassins and stuff, you know? Uh, and by reason of the entry of the French, he brought about all those things which I have discussed above in the actions of the Duke, which is Caesar Bouger, okay? And, um, and although his intention was not to uh, advance the church, so not to advance the church, you know? But the Duke, nevertheless, what he did contribute to the greatness of the church which after his death and the ruin of the duke became heir to all his labors so all that devilish work he became you know um he became heirs for that you know all the gold and everything that he was stealing from the moors you know the uh what, what did they call them the, the morano jews you know which were israelites man you know um yeah so so we're gonna get something from this book too as well did, 
did you have a scripture? Um. Well, yeah, I, I got a uh, second Ezra, um, what was it, the uh, 13 and the 40th verse, mm -hmm. speaking on um, Latin tribe coming over here. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, just to prove that uh, it wasn't it wasn't from no uh, barren straight, man. Yeah. You know, but you got these Latin tribes thinking that they're Chinese and shit. So this is uh, Second Ezra 13 and 40. It says those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, mm -hmm. whom Salmanazar the king of Assyria led away captives, and he carried them over the waters. So. And so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would lead the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. Yeah, so, so that further country is talking about America, okay? The Americas, okay? And uh, yeah, that's where never...